Hey guys, I know a lot of you are out looking for your first UX design role, so I thought in this video I would share with you my recent experience going through the interview process as a senior product designer. So in this video, I'm going to talk about my interview process, the kind of questions I was asked, how I prepared, and also how long everything took from start to finish. And just to set the stage, this all happened in the third quarter of 2023, but I had actually really wanted to start looking for a new job back in early February. It was just because we had some family things going on that it wasn't really a good time for me to start looking for a new job, so I didn't get around to building out a new case study and also updating my portfolio until around June. So around that time, you would have seen on my channel how I was updating my portfolio and also writing a new case study and creating a case study presentation using ChatGPT. So if you're interested, I'll definitely link those videos here so that you can view them. And the strategy for me was really to work on a new case study presentation. At the time, I already had three case studies written on my portfolio that I thought were in pretty good shape. So I thought that they would be enough for me to get through a phone screening with a potential recruiter or hiring manager. That's why I focused solely and focused so much attention on creating this case study presentation that I can use to wow potential design team members. And finally, after about a month of work, I was ready to apply for jobs and I did so starting on July 1st, which was also Canada Day. And I made sure to track everything with my Notion career template under the job application tab. And when I was looking for a new job, I just applied like a normal person on a Indeed, I did try to reach out to my network, but there wasn't really anything that was really coming up for me. And I didn't do any cold emailing. I didn't go on LinkedIn. I didn't do any networking events. I just kind of applied straight out really normally and just sent out my resume. And it was about a week and a half later when I got an email inviting me to do a phone screening with a talent acquisition specialist. So this phone screening was really a Zoom interview and it would take about 30 minutes. The purpose of it is to see if you are someone who is worth interviewing and worth moving on and actually getting to meet the team. So because I was interviewing for a senior design position, I had to go through a lot of steps in this interview process. And a lot of them involve different hiring managers, senior design managers, project managers, and directors. Just a lot of people with a lot of ownership and a lot of responsibility. So this first initial phone screening is really to see if I was someone worth investing the time into because it costs a lot of money in order to take all those people away from what they were doing and give me some time to see if I would be a good fit for the company. So really the questions that I got asked in this initial phone screening were really straightforward. Tell me about yourself. Why are you looking to leave your current company? What are your salary expectations and start date? And also I got to ask why this role was opened and what they were hoping to find and what kind of fit they were looking for for this particular role. Because you're meeting with a hiring manager or a talent acquisition specialist, they're not really working as a designer. So asking things about the design process or specific research methods, they're not really going to be able to answer those questions. Instead, you can ask about company values or how many members of the team that you're gonna be working with, things like that to really gauge if this is something that you yourself want to move forward and potentially join the work environment of. So it ended up being a really easy Zoom call. It was about 30 minutes long. And afterwards, I always tried to send a thank you note to the person that I talked to before the end of the day. Then that was kind of it. And I heard back the next day saying that I was going to be moving forward into the next round. So this next round turned out to be a behavioral interview that was going to happen a week later. And this was an interview where I was actually quite nervous about because I felt personally pretty rusty when it came to interviewing because it had been so long since I've done a real interview. So for my last role, I didn't actually apply for that job and they had found me through my social media, my dribble and just like things like that. So they had already taken a look at the work I was able to produce, my YouTube videos, my portfolio, my case studies. And when they had reached out, it just felt like more of a vibe test than it was an actual interview. So I wasn't very nervous for that one because why would they bother talking to me after they had seen all my work if they didn't think I would be capable of doing the role that they wanted me to do. So this interview definitely felt like a real interview and I was definitely very nervous about it going in. Now for this behavioral interview, it was with a senior design manager and it was going to be an hour long. The interview itself was super structured. It was about 45 minutes of them asking me questions, usually framed as in give me a scenario when dot dot dot. And then at the very end, I would have a chance to ask questions. So it wasn't like a lot of interviews where it's less structured and more conversation. It was definitely more like formal, I guess, and laid out pretty, pretty structured. <laughs> 
So a few questions I got were, tell me about a time that you had to manage stakeholder expectations. Tell me about a time that you disagreed with someone on your team. Tell me about a failure that you have previously experienced and tell me your favorite part of the design process. And since I was really talking to a member of the design team, I also got to ask a lot of very design focused questions, mostly about methodology, how they worked with different members of like, we'll say the product management team, as well as the engineers. And through that, I got to understand a lot more about how projects and products were structured in the company to decide on if this was something I wanted to continue with. Since I was a little rusty and a bit nervous, I definitely felt like I could have done better in this interview and there were times where I was a bit tongue-tied. And personally, after I did a reflection on it, I don't feel like I prepared for it properly. I think a lot of times when we're preparing for these kind of behavioral interviews, we just write out a list of all these questions and then write an answer underneath and try to memorize it, which doesn't really work well for my brain. So going forward and having to continue doing interviews later on, I developed a new method and like a new template so that it would be easier for me to remember and also talk about my experiences organically. Now I can already tell that this video is going to be quite long so I'm not going to share the template here but if you want to let me know down below and I can definitely make another video and share with you guys that template that I created. All right so after that interview ended I sent another thank you note and then the next day again I got a response saying that I had moved on to the final round. Now this final round was going to be a series of three interviews on two separate days. So on the first day I'm going to have two interviews with two different groups of individuals. The first one was going to be a case study presentation and the next one was going to be a culture fit. Then the next day I was going to have an hour long collaboration interview and I really felt like at this point the company was invested in me going forward and they sent me a lot of resources to try to help me prepare better for these next interviews. So for that case study interview it was one hour long and I was meeting with a design manager as well as a senior designer and the ask for this interview was that I prepare a case study presentation on a project that I had completed within the last two years. Now this is quite new for me. I usually don't have a requirement when choosing which case study I want to present, but it was really good to know that they wanted to see something recent. And luckily, because you guys already saw in my videos, I was working on a case study presentation the entire time and I was able to use that one and create a great presentation for the people I was presenting to. And if I can offer just one piece of advice when you are doing a case study presentation, I would say make sure you are practicing by saying it out loud instead of just thinking it in your head. Because I feel like it's kind of like singing. So you know when you sing a tune in your head, you think you sound great, but then you go to record yourself and then when you listen back to it, it just sounds really, really bad. Well, at least like for me it does. I just feel like what goes on in your head kind of like gets a little bit of like ping or leg by the time it comes out your mouth. So make sure to practice actually saying it out loud and get used to saying the words, repeat it over and over again and really master your presentation skills through actually doing the thing. <laughs> And each time I do this, I try to predict what kind of questions may come up and then fill in the gaps through either my storytelling or by adding additional visuals or text to my case study presentation. But even with all that practice, during my case study interview, I actually got one question that ended up stumping me. And that was when it really solidified for me just how much I want to work at this company because it really told me that hey, there are people here that are going to ask questions that I just didn't figure out for myself. I'm gonna get a fresh new perspective when I work on products and projects. And that was really exciting for me. And that was really what I was looking for in a new role. The worst thing that can happen during a case study interview is that your interviewers don't have anything to ask you because I'll tell you one of two things. One, they don't know how to challenge you as in like they'd never thought so deeply about a product, they don't maybe have the space to, and they won't be able to challenge you and help you grow. Or two, they really just don't care because they already have someone else in mind and they're just trying to fill out a quota by already agreeing to do this interview process with you. Basically, they're just doing it out of obligation. So you really do want questions when you are doing a case study presentation. Then right after that, I had a 30 minute culture interview with one of our directors. And that was a very straightforward culture interview. I got asked things like, what are you looking for in this company? Why are you interested in this job? How do you like to work? Do you like to collaborate? Or do you like to work by yourself? Also, I got asked, tell me something about yourself that is not on your resume. And I was sitting in my office. And as you guys know, I have my huge one piece display and collection behind. So I unblurred my Zoom camera and I ended up talking about one piece with my director, which I feel like was just very lucky because around that time of year, 
the One Piece live action had just come out on Netflix. People were talking about it, more people were getting into it. And even my director, he said that he had been interested in One Piece for a while and was just looking for a good way to get started in it. So I thought that interview ended up going pretty well as well. And just like the other interviews before, I sent a thank you email to my talent acquisition specialist that was helping me through the interview process. Then I spent the rest of the night preparing for my final collaboration interview that was going to be happening the next day. And I totally messed it up. So remember that PDF of resources that I told you guys about a little bit earlier, I just kind of skimmed it. Like I had been through many interviews before for UX design positions and I kind of just knew what things were or what to expect. So I didn't really take a good look at the resources that were provided, which was just a really big mistake. So when I initially saw that this was a collaboration interview, I just thought, oh, okay, we're gonna do a whiteboarding challenge on Figma, it'll be an hour long, and that's that, and that's what I ended up preparing. However, about 30 minutes before the actual collaboration interview, I decided to read the PDF and I found out that the collaboration interview was actually just me talking to a director as well as a product manager about how I like to collaborate within teams. So basically it was like another behavioral interview. And that just told me that I prepared completely wrong. I had about 30 minutes to recenter and kind of rethink about how I'm going to prepare and go about this interview that was going to happen. And luckily, because I had thought of that new template for how to prepare for behavioral interviews, I ended up doing okay and I didn't feel too bad about it because I felt like I had prepared enough. It was just a really like dumb mistake on my part for not reading through a PDF of resources given to me and yeah, that, that was totally on me. If you guys ever go into an interview and they give you resources on how to prepare for the interview, definitely take a look and don't be like me. And that collaboration interview was about an hour long and it went really well again. Then at the end of the day, I did send another thank you email to my talent acquisition specialist who had been helping me throughout the entire interview process and I was done. There was nothing else I can do other than wait. I ended up getting a response from the talent acquisition specialist the next day who ended up saying that Thank you for applying. The team is gonna decide and we'll contact you in a few days. However, a couple hours later, they got back to me and they were like, hey, actually the team decided really quickly and they would love to bring you on board. When can you start? When can you start talking about your benefits and get all the offer and everything sorted out? So that was really great news. I ended up getting a package or like an offer where I can review start date, salary, title, benefits, um, all like, whatever perks, I guess, like whatever else. And I had the weekend to really think about it. And that was kind of it. It was, it was really good and a really smooth process overall. I ended up having one more conversation with my current manager because I think they were just on vacation or something and they weren't able to be part of the actual interview process during the time I was taking it. And this was just a expectations call kind of to set up what my next 30, 60 and 90 days are gonna look at as well as the product that I'll be on and like what kind of stage we're in as a team. Oh, and in that last expectations call, I also got feedback from the team and they said that I was really good at storytelling. They were super impressed with my case study presentation, which I practiced like endlessly for. So I'm really happy all of that paid off. And they felt that I was really willing to accept feedback and looking forward to learning from the team as well as like mentoring and teaching junior and intermediate designers on the team as well. So that was really, really good to hear. All that was done and I ended up signing it and that was kind of that. So the interview process, I, I started preparing seriously in June and then I started applying in July. Then the interview process itself with this company went from about mid-July or late July to mid-August. So all in all, it took about a month for all of these interviews and conversations and emails back and forth and everything. And I fully recognize just how much good timing um, and honestly like luck came into me finding a new role that would be such a good fit. So yeah, I'm definitely very, very grateful for that. And I totally understand that this may not always move as quickly. However, it is something that happened happened to me and was my situation. So after I signed the offer in August, I didn't actually start until early September, which gave me a few weeks of just pure relaxation. Like I cannot tell you guys how much I needed some time off. 
for the entire 2023 until like that point, I had only taken two vacation days the entire year. Like I was exhausted and it was really just not good. Like I, I really needed this break and I'm so glad I got to I got to do it and it was a really just wonderful summer. But yeah, I hope this video can give you kind of like a look behind the veil of how a interview process looks like for a senior product designer. I think the company that I work for was quite structured. So um, it it went by very smoothly and also very methodically, methodically, very structured. I'll just say structured. It was very structured. <laughs> um, I, not every company is gonna work like this. Some interview processes are gonna be faster. Some might take a while longer. So it, this is just one example of something that can happen for you guys too. But yeah, I think this takes us to the very end of this video. As you guys can see, it is getting quite dark outside. So it is about time for me to start dinner. I just wanna say, I wish you guys the best of luck going into UX finding those UX design positions, going through your interviews and really starting your journey in this career. If you have any questions about the interview process or just case study presentations or your resume or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment below or you can also sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching time with me personally through Superpeer. There is a link in my description which you can use. So yeah, I think that brings us to the very end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Also, thank you to everyone who joined in on my first UI design stream. I have so much fun and i can't wait to keep doing more with you guys so definitely follow me on twitch if you guys are interested in just joining for like a really chill really cozy kind of ui streaming process and like watching me design and everything so yeah thank you for watching as always and i will see you guys in the next video bye